All right, everybody, this is Brandon with Galloway Precision. Today we are going to go over the disassembly and reassembly of the Ruger American, uh, Ruger's newest pistol on the market. We got one in hand. Uh, already we're making a guide rod for it. Uh, we look to be making some new parts for it also in the near future. As always, first thing we're gonna do is uh, make sure we've got pistols unloaded, weapon is clear. Take our magazine, set it off to the side. Uh, before we get to complete teardown, one of the really ingenious things that they've done with the new American is the ability to change your grips out. Uh, your back strap, I should say. So when you get this, it'll come with two magazines and it'll come with the three different back straps. Uh, right now we have the smallest one on there. In my opinion, it gives you the best grip uh, on the pistol, but it's real simple. The instructions are gonna tell you to turn it clockwise, get it on. Reality is, as you hold it up, you'll see there's a small hex key inside, or a Torx key, rather. It comes with its own Torx wrench. You're gonna turn that, you're gonna turn it quarter inch turn counterclockwise, push down, and the grip module comes right off. You can see the rails here where it connects, and then you just pick which grip you want to go on, place the new grip on, push it down, pop it up in place, Turn it one quarter turn counterclockwise. Oh, correction. One quarter turn clockwise until you feel it stop. Grip's not going to come off. And there you go, you've changed your grip. So and that's the first really neat thing about this. Next thing is if you're familiar with SIG firearms at all, SIG 226, SIG Peak 320, any of those, the slide comes off very similar to that. So you're going to rack the slide to the rear, put your slide lock up. And here where the takedown lever is, you're going to swing that a full 90 degrees down. And right off the slide will come. Now already, as you can see, we've got our 20 pound guide rod inside. Uh, this was a prototype version, but your version will come with the captured washer on the end. It's going to come with either the option of a stainless steel screw at the end or a black screw at the end, similar to our SR9 series. So we're going to set that off to the side, slide, and uh, barrel are both made out of stainless steel. Uh, the slide itself is blacked uh, stainless, whereas of course they leave the barrel just standard stainless, standard Ruger stainless barrel. Built like a tank, thing can take a lot. Uh, you can see the lock up mechanism, standard breech, standard locking breech setup. So we'll set the barrel off to the side. Now, the one thing that's a little bit different with the Ruger American as opposed to the SR series is uh, when you go to take apart the slide, take the striker out of the slide, there's no pin like the old series had. Um, and even on the new series of the SR, they didn't have an actual hole pushed out so that you could get a punch or something down in there. You just kind of had to take a pick and pry it in. The Ruger American now has, as you can see, we've got a nice little hole right there. Well, your 1 16th punch is going to fit in there just perfect. Slide it down in push the striker forward, back plate comes right off. Take the back plate off, pull your striker out. Now you notice, that's it. There's no blocker, there's nothing else. Uh, similar to the SR, you do have your extractor pin. You can knock that out, the extractor comes off just like normal. Uh, striker is very similar to the SR series, uh, but also much more streamlined, a lot less chunky, uh, breaks down in a similar way. You just knock out your pin here and it comes right apart. Now I'm using my uh, bench block. If you don't have a bench block, just a vice works fine. Or as Eric has used in previous videos, good roll of tape. Standard striker cross pin. All right, pull that out. Got your striker guide, which we've already, uh, the pull on this is really great. It's got a real nice light, even pull, um, but just to head it off at the pass, just be on the safe side, we've already developed an increased rate striker spring. Uh, that's what's in here now, as opposed to the stock, which we have right here. You can tell ours is gonna be just about a coil longer and uh, built of a different steel, a little bit stronger. Um, not to say that you'll necessarily need it. We haven't run into any light strikes, but 
just to head it off at the pass, we went ahead and developed that. Uh, we're going to be looking at developing a um, steel or aluminum striker indicator rather than the plastic one. Plastic one's a little unique in the fact that it's got these two notches here. Um, they don't really serve a purpose. Uh, when you pull this part, if you have questions like, oh man, they don't really do anything. They're just uh, uh, standard sleeve for capturing everything and then very simplistic striker which uh, when we get to the innards of the pistol you'll see where the blocker actually is this does have a blocker um, but it's a camming blocker rather than an actual firing pin blocker uh, that would normally be or striker blocker that would normally be in the slide so that's it and uh, of course reassembly is fairly simple sign that in put your spring on push it back in to the striker making sure to line up your holes so you get everything lined up perfectly. Now what I like to do is I'll take one of my 1 16ths and I'll use it as a dummy pin. Take my roll pin, just stick it in there enough to get it going. Take and tap it with my brass hammer. Once I get it going, I pull my punch out, set it off to the side, we'll flip our block over hammer at home strikers back together make sure when you put this back in that the flat end of the striker cup faces the bottom slide it in compress stick your back plate on just like you normally would anything else see our back plates in snap it in and that's it uh, the American is great, the slide is real great, and the fact that it's a very simplistic striker fired slide. Uh, I'm going to put our barrel, our guide rod back in. Now we're going to move on to the fun stuff. Alright, we're going to move on to the frame. This frame is a little odd. Uh, as you see when we break it down, you're going to have your uh, trigger bar on one side, and there's actually a locking bar that helps keep tension and keeps tension on the chassis to keep it inside the grip frame module. So what you need to do, we're gonna use our pick for this, take your pick or your 1 16th, and you'll see this little guy right here. Now, in the manual it calls it an actuator. Uh, you're gonna push that forward some, and if you want, you can actually leave the pick in there. You're gonna turn this, your takedown pin, at that angle right there, when you take it out, you'll see you have a small little hole right there. Just push your actuator forward and your takedown lever will come right out. Now the reason you have to turn it at that angle to line up right here, as you can see, you have this lip right there, this little protrusion that's on the takedown lever. That's gotta be lined up. So we're gonna set that over here. Now we're ready to take the grip frame out. What's also great about the American, the way they've gone about in this, there are no through pins that you have to worry about through the grip frame. You're going to take lift and pull forward. You can see in the back of the grip frame, you have an area that protrudes with a uh, little structural piece right here. Keeps everything uh, from moving around. When you put the chassis back in, it's going to hook directly into that. So we're done with the grip frame. We can set that off to the side. Now we're down to the part that everybody's interested in. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart, take off um, trigger bar, trigger. Uh, we have our trigger return spring right here. All right, so the way these are gonna interact with each other is the trigger bar. You can see here, small nub, trigger bar hooks to that. On the outside, trigger return spring, and we'll show you how that goes back together when we put everything back together. Next thing, this thing is under spring tension, so you're going to push the actuator forward and just pull straight up, and the locking bar will come out. And so that there's no confusion the way Ruger designed this trigger bar, uh, even though they're not remotely the same length, they've made them different colors. Your locking bar is going to be a copperish finish whereas your trigger bar is your standard tin coated uh, silver. All right, so now, next thing we're gonna pull out is our slide lock. Now again, we've got a very simple design, which is great for this. 
Um, we've got one cross pin, action, you know, we sit here, cross pin, rotates on the cross pin, simple spring. Now when you go to push this out, I usually use my uh, 532 seconds, it's a little bit bigger. Keep your thumb over the top of the slide lock release, just to make sure that that spring doesn't take off on you. All right, so there you go. There is the slide lock, all one piece. It's the ambidextrous uh, controls on this pistol. I'm gonna set that off to the side. There's the spring that goes in it. All right, now we're gonna get back into the sear housing. Now, the sear housing is a little bit different on this. We're gonna need our 1 16th punch. All right, first one you're gonna push out is the main main camming actions back here this right here goes through the actual sear itself the springs that are part of the actuator the the legs or arms if you will the hook into the actuators and then the spring itself seats right here this is what makes the sear go up and down uh, you do have another spring under here that keeps tension on the blocker but it's strictly for the blocker without this little spring nothing's gonna work sear doesn't work nothing works so we're gonna go ahead and pop that out keep your thumb on the bottom of this here and you'll hear the spring pop so you can keep your thumb and finger on top spring will pop and there you are there's your sear spring now in your manual it's labeled 35 36 i can't remember which and they call it uh, the sear actuator spring the huge name for it it's your sear spring Set that off to the side. Now you notice as soon as I did that, everything got floppy. But you still have three other pins holding everything in place. So the next pin we're gonna take out is one right here in the top. Goes through the blocker. You wanna get the actuators up because all of these have cutouts in them so that you can actually see how it moves around on there push the this actuator back it's going to open up the hole take your 1 16th punch push it through your sear is going to pop out now keep in mind there's another spring that goes actually down inside the sear that's for the blocker this is your blocker spring uh, all this spring is for it serves no actual purpose for the sear um, it's essentially a sear return spring but mostly what it does is you can see the cutout in the grip frame where that spring seats. That makes sure that there's proper tension and pressure on the entire chassis so that it seats properly inside. Because the sear spring will actually spring it back on its own. So we're gonna set that off to the side. All right, we have both our pins out now. Now, as soon as you pull this pin out, the actuators are gonna come out as well as the blocker. Now here's when we go to reassemble this is your blocker so the way this is interacting here's your blocker it's just grabbing right there on the striker so what's going to happen when it goes to shoot this cams out of the way releases the striker forward slide comes back this is cammed up grabs it cocks it it's ready to go so that's how the blocker in the Ruger American works. It's a camming blocker. Uh, it's not an actual blocker in the sign. It's actually a pretty brilliant design. Very simple, very effective. So we're going to set the blocker off to the side. Now here we have our two actuators. Um, both of them. As you see, have the hooks. Now this one actually has a protrusion. This is actually the actuator that the trigger bar hooks to that actually fires everything. Uh, if you put this, it's impossible the way they have the chassis cut, but if somehow you manage to put these in backwards, nothing's going to work. But this is your actual sear actuator, and this is your locking cam actuator. This locks everything in place. You can see they've gone to a lot of trouble um, in the castings of these. Got lots of little holes and openings, and each one of these, with the exception of right here where the hook is, uh, gets locked in place but the way that the action works as you fire the entire 
both actuators, the entire cam system, moves back and forth. So it was actually a pretty smart design on their part. Plus, if you see inside, if you look down in here, you can see a lip. And you can see on this side where there's an enlargement. So what happens is when you put the pin back through, it goes in there. And as this slides forward, that locks everything in place and won't allow side to side movement. Uh, it takes a lot of the slop out of the uh, sear housing and actually makes for a very nice trigger. All right, last thing we're gonna take out are our last two pins. And that's going to be the pin for the ejector. Very simple, straightforward, uh, very Glock-like. Um, this is part we may look at in the future, but as of right now, we have no further plans on it. Um, everybody's been asking us so far what the numbers mean. Honestly, I don't know yet. Uh, this is the first one we've gotten our hands on. Uh, they only released a thousand of them before SHOT Show. Uh, SHOT Show was just over January 22nd. And they should start shipping to more and more uh, gun dealers here very shortly. So there's your ejector. That was our last pin. Our very last pin we're gonna pop out is gonna pop out the secondary sear. Now this is also acting as your sear return. As you can see, you can see where the wear is, where the sear catches. It's a two-stage sear. First stage is here. Second stage is fired. So you can see how the sear interacts. You have your secondary sear return uh, that keeps, this is the camming action that makes everything without this piece, again, just like your sear spring, without this cam working, nothing in the pistol works. So very important piece to put back together. So those are all our pieces laid out. And here we have the completely stripped chassis. Um, from the looks of it, this is a MIM chassis. Uh, doesn't look to be uh, milled, looks to be uh, MIM injected and then machine finished, but it's very solid. It's a good, solid, hard chassis. There's no flex to it. You don't have to worry about, okay, you know, is Ruger's newest gun, you know, going to have any of the same issues as the SR series did when it first came out. I would venture to say it's not going to have the issues that the SR series had when it first came out. Uh, this is much sturdier design. Um, but also, while it looks complicated, it's very simplistic, which is great because that adds to the function of the weapon, makes it function a whole lot better when there's a lot less going on. So now, we're going to put it back together. First thing we're going to do is put our secondary sear back in. And when you put it in, you're going to have this small square piece facing forward. The spring is going to lay against the inside of the frame. I'm going to slide that on down in there. Now this is where it gets a little tricky with this little guy. Because I told you Ryan, you're going to have to come in from the upside, underside of it, the way it sits. Now when you put it in, it's going to sit basically the way it needs to. This pin is the one you're going to use. You know it's the correct pin because you'll see a small hole in the end. It's going to look like a roll pin from the opposite side, but it's not a roll pin. This is a solid steel pin. I'm going to slide that in. You'll know you're completely seated when you're flush on the left side and you have the roll pin look piece sticking out the right. All right, next piece we're going to put in is the ejector. Now this is where the bigger opening on some of these parts is going to come into play. Uh, when you go to first put this in, do not line up both holes immediately. You want to make it a little offset. And the one that goes in here is going to be this pin. It's got two wide turn downs on either end. And then you have the three cuts in the middle. Uh, they actually serve no purpose other than aesthetics. Uh, you're going to slide it in, make sure that it seats. Now, once you have that all the way in, you want to be careful not to push it all the way through because what you need to do, push that backwards. Now, once you push the ejector backwards, pin can't move. It's locked in place. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to put our actuators in. I'm gonna start with the trigger bar actuator. Now, as you can see, when you go to put these in, the actuators actually line up and interact with the first sear drop, or the secondary sear, as I call it. All right, we're gonna put our left one in. This is where it gets real fun, because not only at the same time do we gotta put these in, and they go specific specific direction as well. But we also are gonna be putting the blocker in at the same time. So we're gonna start from the left side, place in the first actuator, place our blocker in, and you'll know that you have the blocker going the right direction because it's going to have a claw here. You can see the claw. That hooks to the front end of the secondary sear. So, place it in. Get our bar started there. All right. Take our secondary actuator. It's easier to come in from the bottom. You're gonna make sure that the trigger bar, the trigger bar interacts goes through first, up into this cutout, and we are now seated. All right, next thing we're gonna put back in is the sear. Now, this spring on the bottom, there's no need to take it off, never any need to take it off, but it does come off. So make sure that it's actually on there and that it faces downward. Your half cups face up as well as the blocker spring facing up. So we're gonna come in from the bottom. Actually, I'm jumping ahead of myself, sorry guys. On the bottom here, you'll see the blocker has a little, little nub right there. That is where the blocker spring is gonna seat. So we're gonna push it on up in there. Now comes the super fun part. We're gonna take our last rod you gotta make sure that your actuators line up, everything's lined up. I'm gonna start it. And at the same time you're holding this, what I have found to be the easiest way to reinstall the sear spring is while you're holding the sear and the actuators, which sometimes might get a little out of line, but you can pretty much hold it with your index finger. It's not that much spring tension. You're gonna put that in, making sure that the arms are in the actuators. Line it all up, push our pin home, we're all together. Now, the easiest way I have found, rather than trying to bend the arms up, because while this is the sear spring and it can take a lot of pressure, if you try and bend these arms up from the bottom, like you would say an AK trigger or a uh, AR trigger or any, any other wound spring like this, it bends very easily. So, I take my 530 seconds, line it up, and I push forward, which can be a little tricky. You can see it's wanting to pop off. Just push it down, and it'll pop into place where you need it. And it may take a couple times, but you'll hear it pop. You can see that it has popped underneath the back push it over, make sure everything's centered. I like to take my pick, make sure everything is centered the way it should be. And we now have our sear housing back together. Now, next thing we're gonna need to put on is the trigger, trigger bar, trigger return spring. And the trigger has actually got a couple different angles so that it'll only go in one way. You can't just drop this thing in and you can see the cutout in the frame. So what I like to do is I like to take the trigger, get it kind of in there. I take my trigger bar, seat it on the nub, get that in. The last thing I do is put on the trigger return spring. Once I get the trigger return spring on, I like to take my pick. I'm holding my thumb over the spring so it doesn't pop off. And I just take my pick and I wind it down, which can be a little tricky because this is a very stout turn spring 
and it will seat right underneath the trigger bar right there. Now, you can see we're good. It's in place. You can see the blocker move. You can see the sear drop. So we're going to hold that right there. Keep a finger over that. We're going to flip her over. We'll put the actuator locking rod in. All right, we've got those. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take and put together, reinstall the slide lock and the spring. Now, the only problem that you're going to have here that I found is this spring does not want to compress exactly the way you want it. So what I do is I take and I put this in first. Take and put the spring on the nub. I'll take my small flathead screwdriver and I'll compress the spring. Oh, and we lost it. All right, we found it. As you can see, the spring, it, it can be a little difficult. So, I like when that happens in the videos, it shows you guys that even though we do this for a living, it can still happen to you too. Or us, I should say. So I'm going to set it back in there. Compress. Come on. Well, it's deciding it wants to be super difficult right now. figure out a way to if your trigger bar pops off it's no big deal we'll go ahead and get the trigger out of the way too it's easier to hold it this way insert this is honestly probably the hardest part in the entire thing all right there we go she's seated now Need to line your holes up. Take your last pin, biggest pin, put it in, you're good to go. So go ahead and put our trigger and everything back in real quick since it fell off. put our chassis back in our frame so we'll take our frame we'll put the trigger in and you can see right where everything's gonna line up press the chassis down and back it's in we'll go to put in our takedown lever now in order to get the lever to go back you're gonna have to push this actuator forward Lever drops. That lever came unseated. This may happen while you're putting it back together. All you gotta do, pop that back out. Once that comes out, sometimes it'll do that. You can see how it's got some play to it. So just make sure that that's back seated properly. Place it in. Back. Push it forward. Lock it 
back and there you go slide back on all right making sure it's empty we're gonna do the function check now pull the trigger hold it rack it you should hear the click pull everything is good and that all of you in YouTube land is the Ruger American uh, like I said we've already got the increased rate striker spring in the guide rod coming to the market uh, be on the lookout on our website and Amazon uh, for those parts over the next few weeks uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page uh, follow us on Twitter Facebook Pinterest uh, pretty much anywhere you can find us we're gonna be there uh, as always stay safe stay accurate and God bless